Whoa, whoa, we got a tray cubby, people. This is not good. Hey, gearheads. If you have a serious craving for all things cars and tech, welcome to my channel. Today we are reacting to Fast and the Furious. As you know, they just came out with F9, the latest ninth installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise. I cannot believe they have made nine of these bad boys, but for those of you who aren't too familiar with the Fast and the Furious saga, this movie franchise is centered around a series of action films about illegal street racing, high spies, and of course, family. Don't believe me? Ask Dom. I don't have friends. I got family. Today, however, we are going back in time to react to some of the most iconic scenes from the Fast and the Furious one, the movie that started it all. But before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Jen and I'm a car lover and tech expert. You may have seen my previous Emmy award winning shows, Boys Toys, or maybe even my new TV show, It's How You Get There on Discovery Channel, or Motor Spins on Facebook and YouTube. If you also love tech, please do me a favor and smack that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's go fast and furious, baby. Roll the first clip, let's react. Okay, fast and the furious number one. I'm excited, honestly, I think this was one of my all-time favorite movies back in the day. I haven't watched this in a while. Have you guys let me know in the comments? Let's do this. We've got what looks to be 1995, 1996, somewhere in there, Mitsubishi Eclipse. I was obsessed with them back in the day, it was specifically the Spider Edition. You had the RS, the GS, the GSX, if you wanted the all-wheel drive version. And it has a two-liter, four-cylinder engine. I'm sure the way this one's modded out before the turbo is going to have somewhere around 210 horsepower, but like, standard or stock, it was really working with 140 horsepower. It's funny because whoever shot this, they're making it look that he's like out of control the way they're stylistically shooting this. It's kind of out of focus, it's really like shaky, and that is to give the appearance that he is driving fast and furious, like he's driving faster than maybe he can handle. The thing with filming, because I film a lot of TV shows. I'ma let you in on a little secret. We have filming insurance. And so, uh, you may or may not have known this, but most TV shows and films, actually, you aren't allowed to drive over a certain miles per hour. A lot of times with different filming insurances, you can't really go over 50, 60 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. We got the big race happening. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't seen this in so long. I'm not gonna say I went to a street race or two back in my day. Whoopsie, 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 whoopsie. He definitely, they're looking at him so annoyed. He pulls up trying to be cool and he totally passed the start line. But what do we have here? Who do we have lined up? What cars do we have? So stock form, we have a 1993 Mazda RX-7. Dom's racing that. So that would probably have a twin turbo 1.3 liter engine. We got a little sneaky peek action. We have Little baby Nos canisters. Dom has them under his seat. And 255 horsepower. Not too shabby, not too shabby. His like quarter mile would have been somewhere around 13 and a half seconds. The one, the only Paul Walker. RIP, still love him, but how well would Brian O'Connor, O'Connell, whatever his name was, the undercover cop, how well would he have done in this race? Well, his quarter mile time would have been well over 16 seconds. Fast, but not as furious, we'll say, as Dom's car. The white car is like a 1990 something Honda Civic. That would have ran a quarter mile in like the 16 to 17 second range, so it's kind of like right in there with uh, the Mitsubishi Eclipse, unless it was completely modded out, probably had around a 125 horsepower stock. 
It definitely would have been slower getting off the line, zero to 60. The other car was the Integra GSR, and this baby was fast for sure, not maybe as fast as Dom's car, but definitely it would have probably taken second had this race really occurred in real life. It's zero to 60 time was somewhere around the seven second range. Oh, Paul Walker with the Nas. It makes the car go faster because when nitrous oxide is heated to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, its molecules split into nitrogen and oxygen, which means that more oxygen is produced for combustion. So it allows the engine to produce more power in the process. Even more horsepower, baby. But this wasn't a real Nas system. In fact, the director, whoever it was, the technical advisor, said that they made it from old scuba gear. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Did he just hit his air conditioning button to have the, the NOS system come out? Warning, danger to manifold. Oh, I'm really kind of confused by this warning and system. Uh, did it mean the intake manifold? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I guess sometimes when you hit 150, 160 miles an hour, your floor panel just comes off. That's a little crazy. I don't believe that had anything, anything at all to do with the manifold, uh, but it flew off. Okay, opening the garage door. What do we got here? Ooh la la, reminds me of my uncle's garage. Okay, we have a 1970 Dodge Charger. Ooh. So a lot of car experts out there kind of lump in this generation of the Dodge Charger, the 1968 to 1970 sort of version and say that this was the best model of the bunch. They were the best years for this car. 900 horses at Detroit Muscle. 900 horsepower? I mean, that's pretty insane. You have new cars like Bugattis that have 1200 horsepower. This was in 1970. I myself did a show for History Channel and we took Hellcats that had over 700 horsepower out onto a track and man, those things were crazy, crazy fast. So let alone 900 horsepower. That is an absolute terror. Wow. Know what she ran in Palmdale? No, what did she run? Nine seconds flat. Whoa. Palmdale's at pretty high elevation. So if anything, that is adding more time onto your car. So if he's running nine seconds at Palmdale, that means in reality, like on Flatland, closer to sea level, was that like an eight and a half second car? Maybe. That is wild. If that's true, that's wild. My dad was driving so much torque, the chassis twisted coming off the line. Whoa, the chassis twisted. You definitely see a lot of examples of this in the drag racing world and chassis can flex and lift off. This does happen due to extreme torque. Oh, wait, what's happening? Are we in a car race or a car chase? Okay, 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 okay. We have a 1994 Toyota Supra, baby. We got Lamborghini orange, kind of matches my shirt. Supra is factory turbo car with a 320 horsepower, three liter, two JZ. GTE and line six, baby. They made it seem like it's a stick shift in this like little chase, but the real life car was in fact an automatic. And this car specifically, this 1994 Toyota Supra actually just recently sold at auction. You wanna know how much it went for? $500,000. Wasn't this the 10 second car? So this is actually a very fast car. He's racing against what looks to be Honda 125cc motorcycles, like dirt bikes basically. So those things maybe go like 70, 80 miles an hour, but they're going against a Supra in a car chase. Okay, whoa, whoa. We're doing like some motocross tricks. We got a high speed battle and they definitely just like had time to like do some, some tricks. Okay. Oh, man down, man down. Luckily, luckily he's got a full helmet on. It's not full face helmet. His eyes were exposed, but he does have a helmet on, which leads me to my next point. If you have your motorcycle license, even if you don't, if you just ride dirt bikes, it's so important to wear body armor, full leathers, leather pants, or at least riding pants, and leather jackets with like, like Dionysi or whoever you prefer, with full armor inside. 
I guess we're going toe to toe Supra against the Charger. So this is a 1970, 526 cubic inch supercharged V8 engine that he is running. You've got the inline six with the turbocharger on the Supra. If the Supra had the NOS system and it was fully tuned out, like had it all going on, maybe, maybe, maybe it could have had somewhere around 700, 800 horsepower. This would have been a very interesting, interesting race. Dom is doing a wheelie and pulling ahead somehow? No, no chance. At that point, even if Dom's car was faster off the line, the fact that he is now elevated and raised up, the super would have pulled away. Okay, we got racing slicks on the Dodge. Okay, okay, that's good, better traction. We got a train coming, people, this is not good. When trains go over 65 miles an hour, you start to hear them honking and the gate go down when they are a quarter mile out. So everybody is truly going for that quarter mile. Wild. The Saints over, what? You can't leave me at a cliffhanger like that? What? Well, they made eight more movies after. I guess the train did not get them. Okay, those clips were awesome. Honestly, Fast and the Furious used to be one of my all time favorite movies. I had so much fun with it in high school, made me want to go fast, kind of got me into cars, not going to lie. Do you have a favorite show or even movie that features badass cars, planes, or tech that you want me to react to? Well, let me know which show or episodes in the comments below. And if you want me to do cool car reviews, well, I've already done them. So please check me out on Motor Spins by clicking up here. Yes, you'll see the little banner. And as always, make sure you guys subscribe if you want to see more fun videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.